everyone, welcome back to the Institute of Future Technology. I'm so glad you're able to join us again. I wasn't sure after our adventures in the 80s if you would be willing to come back and try this time traveling thing yet again. But here you are. Uh oh. I see some new recruits that look a little confused. Don't worry, let me catch you up. My name is Nathan, and you stumbled upon this institute that was founded by the one and only Dr. Emmett L. Talk. Now, in order to get all the information you need, I recommend you pause this video and go back to watch the first episode of Dr. Talk and the Traveling Clock. For the rest of my time travel volunteers, let's open up the time machine. Dr. Emmett L. Talk has invented a time machine. In the last episode, we learned that Dr. Talk has already been using his traveling clock and has gone to several different time periods. He needs our help to go back and fix the timeline. Now, the only way that we know when to go is to wait to get his letter in time through the traveling clock mailbox. Once we get that letter, our mission will be set. Oh, that sounds like the traveling mailbox from the mailroom. Here, let's go check it out. Yes! It is a letter, and it's from Dr. Talk. Let's take a look at what it says. Dear Soul City Kids, wonderful! I am pleased to hear that you have accepted the challenge and will help me fix the timeline. I'm also glad you used the blueprints I sent last week and that it helped you stop, look, and listen. But here is a new week and I have a new problem for you to fix. In my travels, I visited the Old West where I came upon a place called Rowdy Town. Now I know Rowdy Town sounds like a rowdy place, but it was actually quite peaceful. Too peaceful. You see, Clint Eastwood, a local blacksmith apprentice, was telling me he was feeling lonely. But being a time traveler, I knew I couldn't become his friend because I would never see him again. He ended up living alone for the rest of his life, which is bad because he's my great, great, great grandpa. That means he never had a family, which puts my very existence into danger. I have found blueprints that I think will help aid your mission. Please, fellow time travelers, go back to September 7th, 1885 and talk to Clint Eastwood. My very existence depends on it. I just hope this letter reaches you before I'm erased from existence. Good luck, time travel volunteers. Your friend in time, Doc Emmett L. Talk, September 7th, 1885. Did you hear that? We're heading out west. This is incredible. But to be perfectly honest, I do know what it's like to feel lonely. I think all of us can say that during this pandemic, that at some point or another, we have felt some sort of loneliness. Now, luckily, Dr. Talk has sent us some blueprints that I think will help. Do you remember how to use the time machine? If you forgot, just head back and recheck out our first episode. All right, are you ready, fellow time travel volunteers? This is it. Step one, let's turn the time circuits on. Does it look like the time display readout is good? Great, that's step two. Step three, input destination. September 7th, 1885. All right, I've got it typed in. It looks like we're ready to go. Do I have any time travel volunteers ready to grab some socks to rub your hands together to activate the machine? Great, if you need time to grab your socks, 
simply pause this video. Oh, now I need to plug in the time machine into the device that you're watching from. Whew. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Don't forget, on the count of three, I want you to rub your socks together to generate the static electricity we need. Don't worry, the microcapacitor will be able to collect it and gather it into the time tube. On the count of three. One, two, three! Are we in 1885? We are! Well done, fellow time travelers! I can't believe this worked! Woo! Things look really different in 1885. Okay, now we need to go and look for this blacksmith apprentice. If he even exists. Hold it right there! Who are you? What you doing in these here parts? This here's Round Town. But don't let that name fool you. This here's the quietest town in the old west. Well, greetings, sir. We're travelers from a far off land. And we're looking for a fellow by the name of Clint Eastwood. Have you heard of him? Of course I heard of him. He's me. Well, this is great. Clint, we're friends with the feller you met earlier named Dr. Talk. Do you remember him? He mentioned that you were feeling a bit lonely way out here in the West. Of course I feel lonely. Wouldn't you feel lonely if all you did all day was apprentice for a blacksmith, shoeing horses and fixing wagons? Sure, baggers? sure, we understand. Time travel volunteers, do you have any idea of what we could say to Clint to help him feel better? You're right. We need to check out the blueprint. Here, Clint, take a look at this. I think it'll help. Hey, everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Um, where is everybody? Hello? Anyone? What's up, man? We're all right here. Oh, that's a relief. I was beginning to feel really lonely. I get that. Everybody can feel lonely sometimes, but listen up. You don't have to feel lonely anymore. For real? Tell me more. In John chapter 4, there was a Samaritan woman who felt lonely. We know this because she came to draw water from the well all by herself and at a time of day when no one would be there. Well, that's kind of sad. Sounds like she didn't have any friends. It seems that way. Most women would go get water together. They would talk and laugh on the way to the well and help each other as they filled their jars. Everyone knew this woman had made some pretty bad mistakes in her life. Because of her bad decisions, no one would be friends with her. Instagram followers? Zero. Think you could say that. So Jesus was traveling from Judea to Galilee. Back then, people would walk from town to town, which could be very tiring. Dude, according to this map, that's about 70 miles. That's quite a hike. I bet it took forever. We don't know how long it took, but we do know that Jesus and his disciples stopped in Samaria. And because it was a really hot time of day, Jesus decided to rest by a well where people would come to get water. Too bad he didn't have a camel back. A camel back? I'm sure there was a camel with a back around there somewhere, but what good would that do? You know, it'd keep him hydrated. He could sip water through it as he walked. Oh, a camel back. Like those backpacks you put water in, not a camel back. That makes a lot more sense. Either way, Jesus didn't have a camel back. Instead, he asked a Samaritan woman to give him a drink. What? What did she do? Well, in those days, Jews were not supposed to talk, eat, or drink with Samaritan people. Jesus was a Jew, so the woman was shocked that he would ask her for a drink. Kind of like if a superhero were to ask their arch nemesis for a cherry slushy? <laughs> that would like never happen. Yeah, it was a big deal for Jesus to speak to her let alone ask her to get him a drink. She listened as Jesus began to tell her about God's gift that could be hers. What kind of gift are we talking about? Like a new pair of Nikes? A trip to Disney World? A new car? Uh, not quite. None of those things were around back then. Besides, they don't even compare to the gift Jesus was offering her. 
he told her about the gift of living water. Is that the kind of water you chug down on a hot, sweaty day? No, it's not that kind of water that you drink, but the kind that helps you to never be thirsty again. Just like water satisfies our thirst, Jesus satisfies our hearts. He fills us with his love that never runs out. Sign me up for that. I bet the woman wanted this kind of water. She did. She had been living a lonely life, and she hadn't always made the right decisions. In fact, Jesus told her everything she had done. Oh, like when she spit her vegetables out in her napkin so her parents wouldn't know she didn't eat them? But, uh, oh, 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 oh. But Jesus didn't make her feel bad for those wrong things. He only wanted her to see how much he cared about her. That's the best. So how did that help her not feel lonely anymore? Well, when we decide to follow Jesus, it's like taking a sip of living water. Jesus fills our hearts up with his love. From then on, he is always with us, and there is never a reason to feel all alone. So even when I'm by myself in my room, Jesus is with me? Yep. What about when I'm with a lot of people and I don't know who they are, and I still feel alone? Jesus is with me then, too? Even then. Jesus loves you, and he loves me. When I feel lonely, Jesus is with me. You see, Clint, this blueprint shared stories that can be found in the Bible. Dr. Talk shared with us that when we're dealing with our emotions, we should stop, look, and listen. Volunteers, is loneliness a feeling? Yes, you bet. Now, we stopped to help Clint name his feelings. Clint, can you look at what's happening and what's going on around you? You said you were feeling lonely because you were doing the same thing every day. Tarnation, of course I am. Yep, we understand. Time travel volunteers, can you listen to God's word and will it help us know what to do next? Yes, the woman at the well was feeling lonely and one of the lies she probably believed was that no one understood her or what she was going through. But Jesus came alongside of her. He showed her that he loved her and that if she would follow him, she would never be alone again. That wasn't just true for the woman at the well, it's true for you and me today. The next time we're sitting by ourselves at lunch, or we're wondering what others might think of us, we can stop, look, and listen to the truth of God's Word. Then we'll remember that Jesus is always with us. And that's what we need to know today. It's our big idea. Everybody say it with me. When I feel lonely, Jesus is with me. Let's say that again. When I feel lonely, Jesus is with me. Okay. I need to deal with how I feel. Right now, I'm a feeling lonely. And if I look at what's really going on around me, I can see that my feelings are real. And they are my own. But I don't have to let them control me. I'm going to listen to God's word where it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Jesus is with me. I can trust him. Great job, fellow time travelers. I feel Clint will be able to have a lot better control of his feelings. Time traveler? What's a time traveler? Uh, nothing. We better go. Good luck, Clint. Okay, step one, let's turn the time circuits on. Uh, does it look like we have the time to play readout? Great, step two is done. Step three, input our destination. We need to head back to the year 2020. Don't forget, on the count of three, I want you to rub those socks together to generate the static electricity we need. Ready? One, two, three! Thanks, time travel volunteers. Now that we're back, we can safely wrap up today's episode. But before we go, 
Let's pray and ask God to help us deal with how we feel. Father God, we thank you for the emotions that you've given us. And God, we ask that today, this week, this month, this year, at any time, when we feel lonely, will you help remind us that you are always with us? Will you help us remember that there are caring adults who would love to talk to us and remind us that we are not alone? We thank you and we love you. In your name we pray, amen. Great job, time travel volunteers. Now, there is another episode of Dr. Talk and the Traveling Clock available where he's gonna send us on another time travel adventure. But before you watch another one, take a minute to find your favorite worship song from our Soul City Kids Worship YouTube playlist and worship along with your family. Until then, I'll see you next time.